Hey, so it's Tuesday morning, end of March, and last night I had a pretty big downswing, and I was talking to my husband on the phone, and he's thinking about leaving his job because he's on the police force, has been for almost 10 years, and it's a very, very different job now than the one he originally started doing. He's very disillusioned with a lot of the changes that are happening because of the negative attention police receive in the media, particularly social media. So he's been thinking about <clears throat> looking for a job down here and coming down here um, to Virginia to live with me. But that's complicated because he wants to obviously find a job that will also offer him a pension and it's tough for him to walk away from the police job because he would be leaving his pension behind. <clears throat> he needs a uh, he needs 15 more years. You need 25 years on the force for for the pension to kick in. So it's a really tough decision. We also don't really want to stay in that part of Maryland. Um, so that's another factor to weigh in. That if he stayed there for another 15 years, that means that I would have to get a job up there and stay there. And we're very dissatisfied with um, with what that place has become um, which is very sad for me because I'm from that part of Maryland I was born and raised in the county where he works I grew up about <clears throat> half an hour from where he works um, where his where his beat is so I just, I, I don't know, yesterday was a really rough day, and not because of necessarily anything that that happened. I met with um, some st statistical analysis people in um, this office, this department that we have on campus, and they were telling me that natural language analysis is not really what they do in stats so they gave me some ideas about other people to talk to this is for an ongoing project that I have on writing center mission statements so I came back to my building I have a writing group um, on Mondays and one of my group members uh, who is dissertating right now she gave me some feedback on a paper that I wrote for like how this where this project started um, was in a discourse analysis class at University of Maryland um, over a year ago and she gave me a bunch of feedback on the paper which was super nice um, and very thoughtful and I was reading through it with the intention of working on it you know making some revisions so that I can submit it to a journal that is going to stop receiving submissions at the end of this month, which is in a couple of days, because they have to get caught up on their, um, on their workload. So I started reading through and I just, I just didn't even know where to start. And it just made me feel like, I don't know what to do with this project. <laughs> feel like I should give up. I don't have any time to work on it. I lost a book <laughs> for this class that I don't really like anyway, so that was not helping. I was trying to find someone in my class to borrow the book from. It just, I don't know, the longer I sat there, the worse it kept getting. And I rode the bus home, and I 
you know, finished reading an article for class on Wednesday and got to my car and just was just waiting to get to my car so I could cry. And then I got home and stopped by the grocery store, got myself some stuff for dinner because I thought, oh, if I get myself something yummy for dinner, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe that'll help. <laughs> I made a caprese salad, which is like one of my most favorite things on the planet, and talked to my husband, and he told his dad that he was thinking about leaving his job, and his dad told him he was crazy because of the pension, and he told him, you know, there's no guarantee that the pension will be there when he retires, and... His dad said, yes, it will be there. It's not going anywhere. It's a pension. It's, you know, secured by the state, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Which, yeah, is, I'm sure, all very true, but I, I won't even go there. I won't even get into that. But the point is, is that if he stays for another 15 years, he has to be, <laughs> he has to be alive to make it there and he has to be alive to enjoy his pension and the the thing that he's afraid of now and that I'm afraid of now is that he might not be there after another 15 years because all the changes that are being made are dangerous and could get a police officer hurt or even killed and that is scary because his job is dangerous enough as it is. It's already one of the most dangerous jobs you could have. And then the department is adding <clears throat> insult to injury by saying things like, well, when you're getting upset with a civilian, or I, I don't know what they call them, I'm just whatever, with a person, I don't know, um, instead of getting upset and doing anything physical, you should go to your cruiser and calm down. What? And, oh, and maybe call a spouse to help you calm down. I mean, really? What the fuck? Are you, I mean, what if they come to a domestic call and a guy is beaten on his wife and you're getting upset about it, but you don't want to get physical and tell him, sir, please stop beating your wife or I'm going to get upset and I might come over there and bonk you on the head. Oh no, instead I have to go to my cruiser and sit down and calm the fuck down? What? They're just... No. Leaving the scene when there's violence that is... Uh social media, I wish, I wish you got it. I wish you understood what it's like to be an officer and to make split second decisions in violent situations. <sighs> I don't want to get into this. I really don't. That's not what this is about. <sighs> but it doesn't make things any easier on us every day really doesn't so I'm gonna go to class today I made some Rice Krispie treats for one of my fellow students whose birthday was over the weekend and just gonna Act like everything's cool. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> and I have a safe zone training tonight, so I'm hoping that will be interesting. We'll see how it goes. Bye.